You all know that after God made man, after all that blessing, God gave man an instruction. And he told the man that he must not partake of this particular fruit, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And we all know that Eve used her power of influence and influenced Adam. And as a result of that, man was banished from the presence of God. It's interesting that Satan didn't have access to man before he got married. This is a ladies' conference, and you know, I'm 100% I'm for ladies, right? Good. It's interesting that Satan did not talk to the man before he was married. And because of that, so many people have labored the woman with a lot of names. Some people say funny things. After God made the world, he rested. But when he made the woman, since that day, God has not rested. <laughs> and you find all those kind of funny things going on. You know, somebody gives birth in the family, they ask, is he a boy or a girl? If he's a boy, they are jumping. If he's a girl, say, hmm, you try next time. And funny things like that. But then I began to read this verse of scripture and I had some questions in my heart. Don't let me preempt you. Let's read the verse of scripture. Then I'll talk about it. So, John chapter 2, reading from verse 1. The Bible says, on the third day, there was a wedding at Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus was also invited with his disciples to the wedding. And when the wine was all gone, take note of that, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no more wine. <laughs> they have no more wine. I, I, I question why Peter didn't notice there was no more wine? How come John did not notice that there was no more wine? This is where the uniqueness of the woman speaks. Observant, intuitive, able to decode even the micro expressions of a baby. And so she could tell, even by looking at their faces, that something was not okay. And just by just walking around, she could tell, hey, there's no more wine in this party. You know, if you're having a good wedding, a banquet, like they're describing, if there's no more wine, you don't want to announce that. It will leave your guests in a bad taste. That they didn't prepare enough. There's no more food. There's no more wine. But it will take a woman to see that something was not adding up here. I'm going somewhere. Let's keep reading. Jesus said to her, Dear woman, what is that to you and to me? What do we have in common? Leave it to me. Now, take note of the next thing he said, because I will use that. My time, hour to act, has not yet come. Underline that part. My time, my hour to act has not yet come. Who is doing the talking? Who is doing the talking? Jesus. One more time. Who is doing the talking? Jesus. You're correct. Okay. That's what he said. Let's move on. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Mary, didn't you get the memo? He said it was not yet his time. Why are you still bothering the servants? Because there's something about a woman. When she believes in you, she never lets go. Don't blame yourself for loving your husband so much. It is in your DNA. 
Don't blame yourself for believing in, your, in the success of your children. It's in your DNA. But we're going to talk about how you can ensure that the things you desire, you always see it. Regardless of your position. God made you that way for a purpose. The tenacity of the woman. Jesus told her, it's not yet my time. Mary did as though she didn't hear that statement and went to the servants. Hello. I'm also happy that she didn't go to meet Peter. She didn't go to meet any of the disciples. She went to the servants. She knew who to go to talk to. She knew who to talk to. Concerning the situation of your life, receive clarity in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will stop discussing with the wrong people in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. She went to the servants and she simply said this. Whatever he says to you, come on, what did he say should do? He's a speaking God. Whatever he says to you, whatever he says to you, I believe this is the simplicity of the gospel. And this is the reason so many people are having a hard time believing this simple gospel. Whatever he says to you, somebody says, is that all? Just like that? Shouldn't I fast 50 more days on top? I should just say amen. That's all. Whatever he says to you, do it. Let's keep reading, please. Now there were six water pots standing there as a Jewish custom of purification. Ceremonial washing demanded, holding 20 to 30 gallons apiece. All right, I want to skip all the in-between details there. Let's go down to verse what? 11, please. In verse 11, this situation, look at the conclusion here. The Bible summarizes this way. This, the first of his signs. Miracles, wonder works, Jesus performed in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. By it, he displayed his greatness and his power openly. And his disciples believed in him, adhered to, trusted in, and relied on him. A couple of things I want to mention here. Remember, we saw earlier on, Jesus said it was not yet his time. Verse 11, there is no rebuke. He's telling us that this was God's agenda all the while. The first of his signs performed in Cana of Galilee. He, his power, displaying the greatness and his power openly. And I questioned. Our unusual God. You wanted to announce your son. Why didn't you start by taking him to the temple? Why at a wedding feast? And how come Jesus did not also know that it was time? I think God deliberately wanted to restore the dignity of the woman. It was a woman who influenced Adam after marriage and made him lose his throne, so to say. But here is another woman who is acting like a catalyst in the life of Jesus. Remember, the Bible refers to Adam as the first man, the first Adam. Jesus is the last Adam. The first Adam lost his throne because of a woman. The second Adam is, you know, being enhanced. Mary's acting as a catalyst. 
for Jesus' ministry to start. So whenever you find a woman, don't run away. Help me with that to the men. She's the best thing that ever happened in your life. Especially a woman who knows God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, I want to read this verse of scripture again. And I'm taking it slowly, deliberately. We all know the in-between story, right? Or should we go through the whole motions? I could do that, but I want to go to some other things. All right. Let's go very fast. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Very quickly. Six water pots. Jewish ceremonial purification, etc., etc. Seven. Jesus said to them, remember Mary had said, whatever he says to you, do it. Now, what did Jesus say? Fill the water pots with water. They filled them up to the brim. Eight. He said to them, further instructions. Draw some out now. Take it to the manager of the feast. To the one presiding, the superintendent of the banquet. So they took some. Draw some out now. Draw some out now. When God speaks, don't hesitate. That is where we lose it. When God speaks, don't hesitate. If, for example, your right shoulder could not move, and I say to you in the name of Jesus, move that shoulder now, don't hesitate. Move it immediately. Because the power is released via words. The power to heal that shoulder was released via words. Move it up because it is healed already in the name of Jesus Christ. So they took him some. Let's go to verse 9. He said to, and then the manager tasted the water just now turned into wine. Mm. The water just now turned into wine. Not knowing where it came from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, he called the bridegroom. Now this is why I took you here, verse 10. Everyone else serves the best wine first. When people have drunk freely, then he serves that which is not so good. But you have kept back the good wine until now. Then verse 11. This, the first of his signs, miracles, wonder works, Jesus performed in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. By it, he displayed his greatness and his power openly. And his disciples believed in him. They adhered to him. They trusted in and relied on him. All of this beautiful thing started because of who? A woman. 